Morning. We are recording uh, Statics Zoom uh, Friday, April 17th at 11 o'clock. Uh, we'll record this and post it to uh, YouTube after this. Just a couple of housekeeping items. This is the answer key to the shear tab that I just graded this morning. Those answers are posted. And um, so go through the calcs on that. And uh, you can bring up any questions, uh, say, on Tuesday. Um, the next thing that's due is units quiz 10 is due tonight. Don't forget 11.59. Just a reminder, those units quizzes um, combined average are worth two hourlies. So that's a that's a big one. Whoop. Well, I can't uh, hit that mute. Sorry about that. So hopefully there will not be a message here. Let me just uh, pause recording. So let's resume recording. Sorry about that interruption. Uh, again, the units quiz tonight. Now, the other thing that's due is the, um, where did it go? The DEC uh, Titan Joist Stress Calculations. I have that being due tonight, also at 11.59 p.m. Um, I don't know how many have submitted that. You want another day? I yeah. mean, if you're offering. Yeah, because I'm... Uh, um, so let's go Saturday. That'll be tomorrow night. That way we stagger these things out. I've got too many people missing these units quizzes. Um, so let's uh, go with the deck. Joyce stresses due Saturday, uh, the 18th at 1159. Once I'm done with this lecture, I'll update Vank, uh, and also update the Dropbox. Um, the what we were going over the other day was a series of calculations uh, for the problem 8.1 in the text. Do you see it on your screen? Mm -hmm. 79? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, that has not been assigned. So what I'm gonna do is uh, that will be assigned for uh, Monday, the 20th at 1159 p.m. And to help you with that, that's actually on the last Zoom. We did almost all of the calcs for it. So basically all you're gonna do is write down um, the reaction calcs, the shear moment diagram calcs and diagrams, and then you're gonna do the stress calcs. So let's do a um, problem just like it uh, for lecture today. And I think that'll help you quite a bit on, uh, uh, for doing uh, this homework. Uh, problem 8.1 due Monday. And really, this is a kind of a summation of all of the, uh, a lot of the calcs that we've done for beams. So we're starting to wrap things up in terms of uh, um, relating statics and strengths, stat relating statics to the strengths of materials component of this course. So let's go to share screen. I've got the, uh, the whiteboard all ready. So share screen, select a camera. Can you see the screen? Yes. Yeah. So here's the beam you want to draw. Uh, it's very, we did it, I did it easy, uh, gave it some easy numbers for easy math, okay? I think it's gonna be great to, to follow. Uh, you've got a 10 foot long span. It's actually longer because it's socketed into the wall and it is a fixed end reaction. So this will be another good example on getting the reactions and the moment. And then we're gonna generate a shear moment diagram. What do we want from the shear moment diagram? What data is critical to do our stress calcs? Euler, Euler. VMAX, right? Maximum shear, maximum moment. And then eventually when you get into structural theory and steel and concrete design, some of you will, uh, then you're, you're going to uh, say you're detailing a concrete beam. Uh, the rebar is critical, uh, the rebar placement. So um, again, this is a fixed end reaction. 
and the way we get the reaction R1, we're going to say that this is point A, just to make the uh, uh, just to make the numbers a little more um, making a little more sense. Okay, just getting my paper here. Just a minute here. Okay, the way you get the reactions is you've got some of the forces up. Is equal to some of the forces down. What's the only force that's up in this? It's R. So oh. It's going to equal all of the forces acting down. And the first one we see is 500 pounds. Okay. Now you're probably wondering why we're saying it's positive. If we took the sum of the forces in the y direction equal to zero, then we would say R1 minus 500, hashtag, and so on. But we're setting it up that the forces up equal the forces down, so we don't have to worry about the SIGN, as my high school math teacher used to call it, the positive minus. Okay, so we had 500 um, acting down plus We've got a W12 by 50, so that is a wide flange, okay? So that it's a 12 inch depth, nominal depth. It's actually a little different. We'll show you that in the chart. And it has 50 PLF. So there we could say that 50 pounds per foot acts over a 10 foot span and that right there is my ECL, my equivalent concentrated load. So the reaction is 500 plus 500. Isn't that amazing? So that's a thousand equals a thousand pounds. Is this a new beam? What's that? Is this a new beam? What's the answer? Hey, I got to work on my crankiness even though we're online. Okay. This no. is going to help you generate the numbers for problem 8.1, uh, which is in the book. And again, I'll make that uh, assignment uh, more clear uh, when I send you an email after this lecture. So, we now want the sum of the moments about point A. Because this is a fixed end reaction, it has a built-in moment carrying capability. So taking the sum of the moments about point A. Okay. Um, moving left to right, we have the 500 pounds. That's the 500 pound dead load. And its moment arm is six feet. And now I almost wished I hadn't made the ECL the same number. So let's do the ECL in red. Okay, now this is going counterclockwise about R1. So that's going to be negative. Okay, that's negative. Minus. That ECL, which is also 500 pounds, 50 pounds per foot times 10 feet, the feet cancel, 500 pounds. Its moment arm is, because it acts through the centroid, it's half of that span, which is half of the span length. And then the last thing we have is the moment, the moment carrying capability at R1 because it is a fixed end reaction. It is positive. Okay. So the math that we do, the voodoo that I do, 
That's 3,000. We will do a little math with you. So that's zero is equal to, don't forget this was all set to zero, minus 3,000 foot pounds, minus 2,500 foot pounds. That's the foot marker, pounds, foot pounds, same thing, plus moment at R1 equal to zero. So the moment at R1, which is also at point A, if you put all these negatives over to the other side, it's 5,500 foot pounds. Foot pounds, not feet per pounds, not pounds per foot. Okay. Any questions on this? Um, what is the half on um, where the five feet is? It says half something. The weight of this beam. Good question. The weight of this beam is. Um, or the, I'm sorry, the equivalent concentrated load, which was the 50 pounds per foot, X over 10 feet, that's 500 pounds. That acts through the center of the span. So right here, that's the, right? So that's the, but we don't, I don't want to show the ECL because we don't use that for the shear moment diagrams. That's why you want to um, write this out like I'm doing. That's linear load times distance. Okay. That, that's the moment arm for that equivalent concentrated load. Okay. Now, so we're going to take this off. According to JN's notes, when we're doing stress calcs, JN said the first thing you're going to do, calculate the reactions. We just did that. So let's, uh, this was, uh, what was that? This was 1,000 pounds. And this was 5,500 foot pounds. whole thing starting to shift on me. Okay, that a little better. So, doing what JN taught us, you drop light lines at all the significant points. That's a significant point because it's the end of the beam. It's also the start of the linear load of the of the beam. And this over here is the end of the beam. Okay. Then you're going to set up your axis. That's a straight line, trust me. You do this the same way. Those of you taking structural theory next semester, do it the same way every time. Um, Alrighty then. The shear always starts at what? Zero. Zero. Okay. So the first section of the beam that we're going to deal with is this four foot section. Now we're starting at zero. There's no concentrated load at the end. I've moved it um, away from the end. Problem 8.1 did have that 
concentrated load. But your shear diagrams are still done differently. It's like you're following the yellow brick road or the red brick road of the loading. So how much is it going to drop between here and just before the concentrated load? It's going to drop 50 pounds per foot over four feet. Or it's going to go to minus 200. So that was four feet, drops 50 pounds for every foot, 200. Okay. I wish I had a big calculator. I put it right here. I don't think you're going to be able to see that. But if you said zero, here, let's do this in our calculator. Zero, let's clear this butter. This is my $9 special. Zero minus, in parentheses, four foot times 50 pounds per foot, in parentheses, equals. So that's the value of the shear curve at that point, just before the 500 pound uh, concentrated load. Now what do I do? I subtract 500 pounds. I subtract this concentrated load, so the value of my shear curve right here is 700 pounds. As usual, my stuff is not to scale. Does that make sense or not? I should have got a vape to imitate my old professor. 200 pounds just before the 500 pound concentrated load goes to negative 700. So I keep that in my calculator. Okay, now what am I gonna do in my calculator? Minus, what the hell is that? Minus, left parentheses, it's gonna drop 50 feet over six feet. So it's gonna drop another 300 feet, okay? But that, that 300 is gonna be uh, added to negative 700, and they're both negative, so it now has a value of 1,000 pounds at this point right here. And what was the reaction? A thousand pounds. So just before the reaction, the shear is minus a thousand. And what does it bring us? It brings us right back to zero. And as we always say, isn't that amazing? And there it is. I've got two areas, area one and area two and they're both negative. They're both negative. So let's take a look at the numbers. What's the next thing we got to do? We got to count. Well, we got to straighten up the damn easel. This is going to fall on me at some point, I'm sure. Okay, I'm going to erase all this. Area one is equal to, it's a triangle. One half, this is four feet right here, times minus 200. Foot pounds. Area one equals um, minus 400, right? So 
What's area two? Area two is what shape? See this? Area two is equal to, it's a trapezoid, so the two shear values of the trapezoid are minus 700 and minus 1,000, okay? Divided by two, because you're taking the average and multiplying it by, it acts over six feet of the span. So that's the trapezoid. And then gotta watch your math. So that's 1700 um, divided by two times six is 5100 minus. So those are my two areas. Okay. Any questions up to here? Again, area two is a trapezoid. Make it easier for yourself rather than splitting it into a rectangle and a triangle. Uh, can you repeat how you get the negative 200, 700 and 1,000? Uh, uh, area one? Yeah, not from the from the from the share chart. You tell me. The world doesn't know who you are when I do this on YouTube, so this is to help you. The shear always starts at what? Zero. Zero. Now, between you and me and the world, have you looked at the check at the? Um, uh, PDF that I gave you where it showed every single step to do stuff like this. Have you, how many times have you looked at it? I don't even know which one you are, so I'm not looking at the screen. So probably like three times, three times. Not enough. What you want to do is when you go do these problems, you want to go through that checklist, have that checklist right with you. And that's going to tell you that you always start at zero. And then for every foot as you move along the beam, right? Where you are, you're walking down the yellow brick road, as Mr. H used to tell me. As you walk along the beam, the loading is 50 pounds per foot. So that's 50, 100, 150, 200. You've dropped four times 50 or 200. Pounds. Oh, copy, 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 copy. So what you want to do is, again, when you're doing problem 8.1, and a lot of the calcs are already on YouTube. But try to, try to work your calcs um, in your calculator as you go. You hit the minus 200, then you got to drop down 500 because you have a constant load. That gets you to 700. As you, as you walk along this yellow brick road, dropping 750, 800, 850. 900, 950, and eventually starting from negative 700, you get to negative 1,000, okay? So it really is a roadmap of the loads. Now the moment, okay, let's do that in a different color. I like green, let's do green. The moment here is starting at zero. The value of the moment curve at this significant point is what area one is equal to. And we said that that was minus 400. Those were from, and that was foot pounds. Okay. And so we do this. Okay. Did you hear that squeaking noise to keep you awake? God, I miss teaching you folks in person. Okay. Now, so this is area one. Flush. Okay. And then this value here is going to be area one plus area two. In other words, what, what that's not a negative. Okay. That's minus 400. 
Then you gotta add, so minus 400 foot pounds, but then you gotta add a, a negative 5,100, and that's gonna get you to negative 5,500. And again, because this is a slope straight line, this is a curve with the belly up. Okay, so that equal minus 5,500, which was minus 400 foot pounds plus minus 5,100 foot pounds. And guess what? That moment is a, there's a built-in moment carrying capability because it's like the balcony on my house. It's socketed into the wall, if you will. Okay. Actually, you see that beam right there? Yeah. You, can you see that? Yeah. Geez, I didn't do the dishes. Now, over here, let's see if we can see. Can you see outside? Uh, yeah. Yeah. There it is. So that's the fixed end reaction. Comes through the wall. Geez, I'm getting dizzy just looking at it. Okay. And that holds up the second floor floor joist. So that's what that's kind of what we're analyzing. God, I felt like Mr. Rogers taking a tour. <laughs> you ever heard of Mr. Rogers? Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's not easy being me. Okay. So, what are we looking for here? We're looking for Vmax, the maximum shear at any one point. The maximum range here goes from zero to 700, from here to zero to 1,000. So, this is Vmax. That's Vmax. M max. Okay, that's M max. And those are the two values that we need for our stress calcs. Now, one of you had an excellent question that you emailed me, and I like that. I got, I'm getting some good specific questions. Because it's negative, it just means the direction of the slice, if you will. Because this is um, negative, it's the direction of the moment. But it's still order of magnitude, 1,000 pounds, and order of magnitude, 5,500 foot-pounds. So don't worry about the SIGN at this point in this basic statics and strengths calculations. Mr. H will go over um, how to deal with the direct of the slice and the direction, if you will, the rotation of the moment. That's the whole reason to calculate reactions, to do the shear moment diagrams, is to get Vmax and Mmax. Okay, and again, this is a very basic uh, course, so we're just hitting the tip of the iceberg. Of course, it was so cold this morning, it was colder than the a brass toilet seat on the shady side of an iceberg. Just wanted to leave you with that phrase, okay? Um, three to four inches of snow the other day, and it's dusting today. I feel like I'm back in Caribou, Maine. So, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do the stress calcs, and this is what you're gonna use for the problem 8.1, which will be due again Monday night. Monday night. So now we're going into the stress calcs. And those are the PDFs, what I call the JN PDFs. You want to study those. Um, there was, oh, where the hell did I put it? Let me just see if I can find it in the book real quick. I believe. 
believe it's in the other. Yeah, you remember this one? It's like reading a book. Now I'm really like Mr. Rogers. Right? Remember that? So all I did is I put that in a PDF and I kind of changed some of the formulas because JN wrote this in the 70s. And then finding actual stress. JN actually gave you a roadmap. I put that on uh, Vanco as a PDF. So use this next semester if you're taking structural theory. So let's go into those calcs. The first thing we're going to do, we're going to deal with uh, horizontal shear. So for shear, because it's, uh, actually we're not going to deal with shear because it's steel. Let's just deal with, um, yeah, let's do shear. Okay. And the shear of steel, I got to look in JN's book. Okay. Is the cross sectional area. Or actually, you know what? I'm not going to get into shear. And I'll change that on problem five. Uh, 8.1 because that's a little bit uh, past. We just don't have the time to cover that. So let's go to the um, uh, the moment. And again, the shear uh, we'll deal with in wood only for this semester. Because this is a W12 by 50, we're not going to deal with shear right now. And um, I'm going to write myself a note. So that is um, uh, bending stress only, no shear. Okay. So let's do the FB, which is the bending. The little f means what? Actual bending. the actual bending moment, and that is M max over S. And S is the section modulus. That may even be on the units quiz today. Can't remember, I gotta look at it. And that is a uh, measure of the depth the depth, if you will, the deeper the beam, the more load it can handle. So section modulus is equal to BH squared over six for wood, for a rectangle. And we have a wide flange. So for our W, we're gonna to go to page 572. What did I make this, a 12 by 50? 572. So S is equal to 64.7 inches cubed. Sixty-four point seven inches cubed. You actually learn a lot more of this in um, in structural theory. What was our M max, folks? We're just going to call it. Uh, uh, we'll call it um, fifty-five hundred. What pounds divided by sixty-four point seven? inches cubed. I'm going to change this a little here. I'm going to write out foot pounds. So what do we have to do before we, because if you take 5,500 divided by 64.7, that's only 85 PSI. You're allowed um, on problem 8.1 I think you're allowed uh, 
29,000 29, PSI. I gotta look that up. I have a question. Yeah. Is S always equal to 64.7 cubic inch? Okay, let me just look something up. Uh, I want you to think about that as I look something up. What if this were a W12 by 100? Would it have the same section modulus? No. What if it were a W8 by 40? It's got a dip. So it depends. This is what's known as a shape property. So what you want to look up is on page 572, it's got a symbol SX, okay? The shape property, and it's going to vary with the sizes of beams. Oh, okay. But what do I got to do to this? I can't go foot pounds. I can't go with foot pounds because this is in inches. So what do I have to do? Dimensional now. Remember we talked to that the first week. One foot. 12 inches. It is not squared or cubed, so we leave it just like that. So eventually, that number, 5,500 feet cancel, 5,500 times 12 um, inches um, makes that inches squared. So let's do that. 5,500 times 12 divided by, where the hell is it here? 64.7 equals, uh, it's only a, uh, 1,020 PSI. Did I do that right? 55. Yeah, that's the same thing I got times 12 divided by 64.7. Yeah, it's only 1,020 pounds per square inch. Actual. The allowable in bending, big F, is allowable, and that's 22,000 PSI. which is the same as 22 KSI, kips per square inch. Well, that means that this is way oversized for what we're doing. We're wasting money. We, we could go with a much smaller beam. And we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna to touch just a little bit on beam design. So this is what you're gonna do for problem 8.1. This is what you're gonna do for problem 8.1. I'm gonna make up a handout, save it as a PDF and send that out this afternoon. That'll be due Monday night. Um, it'll be very clear. <clears throat> it'll be based on this Zoom YouTube and Tuesday night, last, last Tuesday night's Zoom um, YouTube as well. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't quite hear what you said was due Monday night. What'd you say about that? I'm gonna put it all on Vanco. Okay, thank you. If anybody has any questions, they're going to take a screenshot of Vanco and they're going to ask a specific question based on that, that posting. Okay. Um, so let's go to, um, let's get rid of this and we'll do the share screen. Okay, sorry about that. Where's share screen? And uh, desktop. There's now. Can you see uh, uh, problem eight point one? Yes. Okay. So I'll be sending you out a, uh, a PDF of that, giving you the information that I want. Um, I think for lab next week, um, we're going to do either collection. Or ground freezing. I'll show you some really cool stuff on ground freezing that we saw down at uh, uh, a tunnel project in, uh, side rail yard in Queens. Okay, so um, through my stuff.
That's about it, almost perfect timing. We're pretty much, um, we've gone 45 minutes. Um, if you keep good notes on all these examples, especially if you're doing, um, especially if you're, you're gonna take uh, structural theory. Also, just a little hint, if you don't have a computer, the college now has um, computers to, um, I guess, to let you use. Uh, I don't know if there, I don't, I don't even think there's a rental fee, but I don't know about that. But you can check uh, through your, uh, through your emails, check your emails on availability of online books and also um, laptops and the use of software. I believe there's a, it's called Horizon. There's a clearinghouse of software that you can use as well. So um, again, once we get off here, I'll update Vanco. I'll download this to uh, YouTube. I'm, I'm up to about 5 million hits, so I got that going for me. Making it big. <laughs> Absolutely. So any last questions before I uh, stop recording and uh, send you off on the road and, and uh, um, in, into the sunset? So th we have the test, the quiz today, and then tomorrow, um, what's due for Saturday? Okay, what did I tell you? What am I going to do right after this lecture? Let me stop recording so I don't have to bark at you anymore.